Hi everybody, welcome to Breeders' Cup Focus. I'm Dan Noman along with Matt Bernier. In this edition, we're going to take a look at the Breeders' Cup distaff. Let's put up the main contenders with odds, preliminary morning line odds made by Daily Racing Forum national handicapper Mike Watchmaker for all the latest news, notes, comments, odds, etc. for all of the Breeders' Cup divisions in the weeks and days leading up to the Breeders' Cup. Head on over to drf.com forward slash BC. The sensational Monomoy girl is the 5-2 to two favorite on the watchmaker line. Abel Tasman coming off a perplexing performance in last week's Zenyatta Stakes. Still the second choice based on her overall body of work at 4-1. to one. Midnight Bizu placed first over Monomoy Girl in a controversial disqualification in the grade one cotillion is at five to one and then you've got the late running long striding eskimo kisses at eight several solid horses at double digit odds let's start with monomoy girl and midnight b zoo they battled it out in the grade one cotillion last time out and we're not even going to get into whether this disqualification was justified i thought midnight b zoo once she got to the outside here and i know she was being forced out by monomoy girl had every chance to go by and just didn't i'm not going to knock either one i thought they both ran well and they're probably the two best three-year-old fillies in the country right now I agree with that. I suppose the thing that you need to consider exiting that race is the fact that the Cotillion is at a mile and a 16th, and they're going to have to deal with an extra 16th of a mile. I'm not convinced that that is Midnight Bisu's friend. And while Monomoy Girl has proven herself at a mile and an eighth, I think it's hard to ignore the fact that how, how could you be super positive about her drifting about down the lane right there? It was a little bit of a concern, a little bit of an alarm. Whether they make an equipment change or not on her, we'll wait and find out. I think the good Midnight Bisu can obviously be close to this entire thing, but again, I don't know that she loves the distance. And the good Monomoy girl, we know, her biggest win to date came at Churchill Downs. So I think they're both legitimate contenders. I guess, again, really, it just boils down to price. I'd rather have Monomoy girl at a mile and an eighth. I thought that at a mile and a sixteenth in the cotillion, that was Midnight Bisu's best chance to upend Monomoy girl. She had not been able to do that in other races at other distances and in the mile and a 16 she still couldn't get up even though she was impeded as for Mono my girl I'm a little bit more bullish about her chances at a mile and an eighth you mentioned she did it once so I'm gonna have to watch the head on another 10 12 15 100 times before the Breeders Cup distaff and wonder was Mono my girl really drifting about or was Florence Giroux really race riding just a little bit too much and Mono my girl was responding to flow she's the leader of the division and she kind of cemented that based on Abel Tasman's non-effort last week as the 1 to 10 favor in the grade 1 Zenyatta stakes. Let's turn into the stretch. This is tough to watch, folks, because you see her in the sil orange silks in fifth. She's on her wrong lead. She didn't break very well. She's been one pace like this throughout, and it's still great to be Bob Baffert because the newly blinkered Vale Dory gets it done. You know, it, it's been well documented that Baffert's got a little bit of a, a illness going through his barn right now, and to be honest with you, I almost feel like you have to hope that's what's going on with Abel Tasman because at least then you would have an excuse where, okay, maybe she's not feeling well and, all right, she just didn't fire. But even having said that, if that is the case, it's difficult to take her off of that performance headed into the distaff. If that isn't the case, then what the heck happened? Because she just at no point showed any kind of interest. She was sluggish out of the gate. She never really got involved. She made a mild move down the backside to get into relative striking range, but she never punched it in at any point. Um, it's really one of those things. Her best race, I still think, is better than anyone else's best. The problem is, uh, who knows if you're going to get that the first Saturday in November. And I think it's a legitimate excuse if it does come out that he is, she is sick. And I think Bob Baffert is reporting that she came out of that race with a little bit of a problem. Nothing that's going to affect her status in the Breeders' Cup distaff, but certainly something that affected her performance in the Zenyatta. That being said, if she goes off at the watchmaker four to one second choice in the Breeders' Cup distaff, off of that effort to me, she is a little bit of an underlay, and I just wouldn't want her off such a lousy race. As for Vale Dory, yes, it was nice to see her get back to the winner's circle with the addition of blinkers, but that buyer speed figure of a 93 really pales in comparison to the Monomoy Girl and Midnight Bizu and some of the others in here. And just think, that was her best buyer speed figure all year long. I think at least if you're trying to spin a positive out of that, it's nice to see that the blinkers going on, all of a sudden, boom, she shows up with a more representative effort because this year she had just been a complete disaster out there. Now at least you know that she can run a little bit. The problem I have is I'm not totally convinced a mile on an eighth is really her friend. You and I 
for what seems like years have been saying, let's turn her back and get her ready for seven eights. Uh, I don't envision that happening because I think Baffert has the top two choices for that division. But um, look, Val Dory, at least she's in good form going into a race like the Distaff. Ba uh, La Force goes out for Patty Gallagher, who's really done a nice job with this filly. And it's kind of a shame that she hasn't gotten a big one. It always seems like she's in against the toughies, whether it's Fault or Unique Bella. And I guess if there was a time, it was last week. The favorite doesn't show up. Vale Dory still may not be back to her best form, and LaForce still couldn't punch it in. She's now run second seven times in 22 lifetime starts, and if she runs in the distaff, she's going to stretch out, and I kind of like her punch at shorter distances. Maybe I'm crazy because she's going to be a good price. I, I, I could be wrong. Has she only won twice in her career? That's I correct. mean, so, I mean, I kind of look at it and go, at this point, if she somehow sprung an upset in the distaff, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility because she is in good form and she has respectable speed figures. To me, if you're using her, you should be using her underneath. Now let's talk about a filly that I know you like a lot, and that is Eskimo Kisses for trainer Kenny McPeak. We're going to go back to the Alabama at Saratoga for three-year-old fillies going a mile and a quarter. There was a very fast pace on in this race. It helped Eskimo Eskimo Kisses, a late runner. She got the better of a good field. She's a Julie came back to win a stakes race at Remington last week, and you've got Midnight Bizu on the far outside finishing third. Eskimo Kisses got a nice trip, a nice pace scenario, and a nice ride, but we always had the feeling there was something here, especially if she gets some pace. And well, a combination of the pace, like you said, as well as distance. Keep in mind the Alabama 10 furlongs. And I guess that would be my only sort of hang up potentially about a race like the Distaff. And we'll see what happens coming up this weekend at Keeneland. I believe she's supposed to run in the spinster. I believe Talk Vuv to me is also supposed to be in there. It, you know, at a mile and an eighth, are you going to get an electric pace situation for her to come at? And if you don't, all of a sudden, are we talking about a horse that she's going to be compromised and maybe a minor reward is her ceiling? That's always sort of the, the difficult thing, especially on the main track with a horse that is a true confirmed one-run closer. We'll see if Eskimo Kisses takes that step forward or at least runs very well in the spinster on Sunday. I wonder if Blue Prize is also going to run in that race as her final prep for the Breeders' Cup distaff. She really loves Churchill Downs and a mile and an eighth is right in her wheelhouse. Just consider she won the Fleur de Lis in the Falls City, both at Churchill, both at a mile and an eighth. Last time out in the Locust Grove, she gutted it out over a very sharp horse in Champagne problems going ashore than ideal distance at a mile and a sixteenth. There's really nothing sexy about Blue Prize other than she seems to fire every time for Nacho Correas. She's very consistent. I think that's a positive thing. and That's not meant to be a knock by any stretch of the imagination. But to be frank, I've never ever looked at her and said, grade one caliber, let alone Breeders' Cup distaff. I think if you like her, you're banking on the consistency, you're banking on the Churchill Downs factor, and you're banking on the fact that you're probably going to be getting double digits. To me, she's more of an underneath type, but you know what? We'll find out. If she runs really well this weekend, should she go in that race at Keeneland? Maybe I could be talked into using her. Keep an eye on the spinster this Sunday as a final important prep for the Breeders' Cup distaff, and you'll get updated odds next week in the Friday print edition of Daily Racing Forum and early next week on drf.com forward slash BC for all of the divisions. This weekend, tons of Breeders' Cup Challenge Series winning your in races, but as of right now, Mona Moy Girl, the boss in the distaff division, the 5-2 to two preliminary morning line favorite on the watchmaker line.